Good morning and welcome to Homepage, a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5, 95.5 and 107.9. I'm Kathy Dugan and my guest this morning is Shelby Taylor, Director of Communications with the City of Gainesville. Hi, Kathy. This is Shelby Taylor with the City of Gainesville. How are you? Doing fantastic. So nice to hear from you, Shelby. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> For those who aren't aware, Shelby, what is GNV Cares? Uh, GNV Cares is the first phase of our uh, relief and recovery effort. Um, we have two separate kind of pools. One is directed to provide individual assistance um, or household assistance uh, for our neighbors for utility, rent, or mortgage support. And then we also have a pool available to support our small businesses who have experienced financial hardship as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This has just been a crazy time for all of us. It seems like we're all learning and adjusting as we go along. And we're finding out that there are people out there who can help. There are places that we can go to find financial assistance. Where does this funding come from? The city of Gainesville has a variety of funds, federal grants, state grants, which are allocated towards special projects throughout the year. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the social distancing restrictions, uh, the funds were not expended. And so those funds are being uh, repurposed to support our neighbors and small businesses. Um, There will also be a portion of this that is funded by the general fund. And the general fund comes through a variety of sources, but primarily uh, through our property taxes. Okay. All right. Uh, Of course, this isn't just for small businesses, but what makes a business or an individual eligible for this funding? Individuals need to live within the city of Gainesville proper, and uh, people can uh, check their address on the property appraiser's website to ensure that they actually live within Gainesville city limits. Eligible individuals will not have um, been in foreclosure, for instance, before the COVID-19 pandemic, but as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And you will have to also demonstrate that loss of wages or loss of hours was a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Mm. Those who receive assistance, what type of assistance can they actually request? For individuals, um, you can request assistance for um, rent support, mortgage support, or towards your utilities. It's important to note that payments will not be made directly to households, but instead to the providers or mortgage companies or lenders, landlords, et cetera. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And with businesses, the same type of thing? Businesses will receive $5,000, and those do have stipulations of how the money can be spent, again, towards rental and utilities, but also payroll. One thing to note about the small business grant program is that uh, businesses that have already received payroll protection through the federal government or SBA loans, uh, through the federal government, will not qualify for GNB Cares for small businesses uh, assistance. And is there a cap on the number of employees that they have to have? Uh, you have to have 50 or less employees be within the city of Gainesville, have an active tax receipt through the city of Gainesville, and um, I'm not sure if I already said this, but 50 or less employees mm-hmm. and the ownership of the business must be local and with the majority of the business owners living within the city limits. And if that business gets most of its revenue from alcohol sales, will it still qualify? Yes. That's good to know. Um, If a business was already deemed essential and they've been open and still able to operate under the emergency order, can they apply for this? Yes, even though a business is essential, if there is proof of loss of revenue Mm -hmm. um, as a result, we know that even those businesses which were able to sometimes, you know, operate have seen a reduction um, in their uh, ability to deliver services and um, thus a reduction in their revenue. So, so long as there is demonstration of need and a demonstration of reduction in um, income, as a result of the pandemic, um, that business would qualify. What about independent contractors? How does that work? I know that a lot of uh, hair salons, the owner is the only real employee there, but they do have independent contractors. The independent contractors is a question that comes up 
quite often, and it's kind of evaluated on a case-by-case basis, but in order to qualify, you must have a tax identification receipt with the city of Gainesville. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I also wanted to know about nonprofits. I mean, they're a business, but do they qualify as a nonprofit? Unfortunately, for this phase of relief, uh, nonprofit organizations do not qualify for funding. Okay, so they would have to look for other type of funding and assistance then. Yes, what we understand is that the the funding that we have available, both for individuals and for small businesses, is likely less than the need. Right. Um, so we would encourage folks who may not qualify for um, assistance through the GNV CARES program for a variety of reasons, or if they are not in Gainesville city limits, that they reach out to 211, which is facilitated through the United Way. And we have partnered with the 211 for this process and in hopes that for those folks who don't qualify for our funding, that the United Way might be able to help connect them with alternative resources that are available. That's awesome. What a what a great community feature that is to have is the United Way. They do a wonderful job. They help so many. When this money comes in, okay, let's say I'm a business owner and I'm going to go ahead and apply for it. I get qualified. I'm good. I'm, I, I mean, is this something they have to pay back? It is not. These are not uh, loans. These are grants. So the payback is not an issue. The only um, instance um, in which an uh, organization would be asked to uh, pay back the money is if uh, it was identified that it wasn't used for the purposes for which it was intended. Mm-hmm. And on the individual side, we eliminate that need entirely by paying directly to the service provider. Which makes sense. Now, with businesses, they're going to have to give you, are they going to have to go ahead and let you know what they're using this for and give proof? Yes, there will be uh, documentation and reporting required on the back end on the part of the business um, to um, ensure that the the use of the funds was um, done appropriately. Okay, that, that well, that makes sense. With individuals, I know there are so many people in Gainesville who really need help, and they just they they just they're wondering: Is this first come first serve with this? It is not first come first serve. Um, the, the city commission's desire was to ensure that everybody got fair and equal opportunity. We also didn't want to see a repeat, um, of what we saw, uh, at the state level with the unemployment. So, um, the application window is seven days and everyone in that seven day window will be treated accordingly. That's fantastic to know. Now, let's say an individual is already receiving some sort of assistance. Can they still qualify? If you are already receiving assistance for a particular service, you would not be eligible um, for uh, additional assistance. So no, no, no double dipping. No double um, dipping. Okay. What about the homeless? Are they? I mean, they don't have a home, so I would suspect that maybe that's not included in it. So a lot of questions have come to us about homeless individuals or. Um, the elderly. Mm -hmm. And um, the response there is that uh, being uh, experiencing homelessness or being elderly doesn't on its own uh, uh, preclude you from qualifying. However, one of the qualifying criteria is that you are able to demonstrate a reduction in income or wages or hours as a result of COVID-19. So the those folks who would not be earning income or were on a fixed income prior to the pandemic would probably not be selected. Okay, that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, now, the qualifying criteria for an individual, is that per person or per household? Per household. Per household, gotcha. And those who are approved for assistance, do they need to account as well? Well, uh, for the, how the money is spent. But you had mentioned that that's going to go directly to, you're probably going to ask them what their mortgage company is, who their landlord is, their utility company, and then you take care of it from there? Exactly. They will have to provide that information upon approval and we'll pay directly to the service provider, which eliminates the need for the individual to bear any burden for reporting. You know, that's excellent. I think that's a great idea that makes it very easy. There's no middleman involved. You don't have to worry about all the extra paperwork, so to speak. I know a lot of us don't use paper anymore, but that makes it so much easier for you guys trying to get to people. Um, What about the college students? Maybe they have leases and several names. Will they each have to qualify for the assistance? So... 
uh, it, it would be done on an individual basis in terms of um, multiple heads of household, if mm-hmm. you will, and leaving, living in a single residence um, so long as there are individual leases would not disqualify the individual students um, from, uh, from for qualifying for assistance. Okay. Now, what if, I, okay, let's say, you know, um, my son is, is renting a, a place and I have the lease in my name, but he's paying the bills on it. Who needs to qualify for this? Well, the individual who can show that they are um, late on payment as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic would be the one that needs to uh, apply or qualify for assistance. Okay, and then maybe they'd have to get, you know, notification to you that this is in someone else's name um, and there's proof of it? Absolutely. And um, we understand that, you know, all circumstances are unique and um, our talented staff um, in housing and community development are, are working very closely uh, with the applicant uh, to, you know, do any reviews that are needed on a case-by-case basis. Specific questions can be fielded through the 211 number. Um, also, we have an email address set up um, to help kind of answer some of the nuanced questions. So those can be submitted to gnbcares at cityofgainesville.org. At city, I'm writing it down. <laughs> at City of Gainesville. <laughs> Dot org. Dot org. GNB cares at city of Gainesville.org. That is beautiful. Let's say the lease is in my name, but the utilities are in my husband's and neither one of them are able to pay. Do we have to put in two separate applications for it? Yes, you would need to, in that instance, um, apply two separate times um, for the, the person whose bill the name is in. Okay. Um, How many applications do you think you guys have now? Just, you know, not even a rough number or anything, but a lot (laughs) or, you know, just kind of coming in. So the application process has been open since Monday. Okay. Um, And I believe we're between four and 500 applications at this time. Wow. And do you think you're going to be able to help all of them? So um, we have not yet begun the the vetting criteria. So this is people who have filled out the application. Um, We'll still have to go through those applications and ensure, for instance, that the addresses do fall within um, the city of Gainesville city limits, um, that their accounts do not already have assistance being applied to them. And the reality, as mentioned before, is we anticipate that the need might be greater um, than what we're able to offer. Uh, And so that was one of the pieces behind partnering with an agency like the United Way. So in the event that we can't help everyone, we can offer an alternative resource for folks. That's really nice. I mean, the the things that everybody's doing, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're seeing a lot of it too all over North Central Florida, people stepping help, but up to help others, whether it's the city of Gainesville with GNV Cares or just individuals helping each other. In a bad time like this, in a scary time like this, where everything's so uncertain, it's really refreshing to see so many people just being humans and being kind to each other and helping out, whether it's an agency like the United Way, city of Gainesville, your next door neighbor paying for groceries. I just, it's really incredible to see how this has brought so many people together. It is. And, um, you know, it, it's always wonderful to see how individuals and also organizations can come together to support a community. I think we have a really, really special community here. I've been really proud to be part of this community and how we've rallied together. Um, my hope, though, is that uh, we don't only have to come together and help one another during times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And we're figuring out ways to move forward in the future, identifying where our shortcomings exist. Mm -hmm. Um, They're being exposed to us now. And um, Mm -hmm. let's hope that we can work together uh, all year long, all the time, to um, help fill some of those gaps where we know they exist. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That would be, you know, when this is all over, when this is over, it would be nice if people remember that feeling of 
just being able to give to one another without, you know, without question. You need help. I can help. I'm going to help you, period. That's how it is. And just something that we should do on a daily basis. But unfortunately, it takes something like this to really snap us into that. Oh, my gosh. You know, I want to help my fellow humans. I want to be neighborly. I, I, you know, maybe the neighbor up the road that you never even knew needs help. And all of a sudden you realize I can help. I can do something. It's the greatest hope that we can get people to remember this time long after it's gone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for those who um, are not, uh, you know, uh, in position to need help, I would encourage those folks, um, if they're looking for ways to help, to, to reach out to the 211 number too. Uh, the United Way does have a dedicated fund set up for COVID-19 relief, and there will be neighbors who um, don't qualify for financial assistance through GNB Cares but are still uh, in need, and that's certainly a way uh, to help. Um, we know that people are struggling with food security, so um, perhaps uh, reaching out to your local food bank is another uh, great way to help support your your fellow man during this time. Absolutely. There's so many farmers out there right now, uh, uh, dairy farmers, uh, produce farmers who have had issues with having too much food because they're used to supplying to restaurants and to schools. And now they're not doing that. I love that the schools are giving the grab and go meals. That is so helpful to so many families and the food banks getting more than ever fresh produce you guys are handing out fresh milk and dairy so it's so nice to see this all coming together and people people taking and putting aside their pride well we've um also seen um tremendous turnout and support for farm share events where as you noted farmers with an abundance of um extra produce that they haven't been able to um, you know, provide to, to restaurants during this time and to see that going to good use and feeding the hungry uh, through these a series of farm share events. I, I, I'm not even sure how many there have been, but they have been very well attended and fully utilized and um, none of that uh, produce <laughs> is going to waste. That is so nice to hear. Now, with restaurants starting to open up, have you been to a restaurant yet? I have not. I have not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we continue in my household to, to follow a, a pretty uh, strict social distancing uh, regimen, but that is uh, for everybody to uh, make the decision on their own to keep them themselves and their families safe. But we do hope that people will, will, will follow the CDC recommendations as we slowly reopen our community, but still want to be sure we're following protocols to reduce uh, the likelihood of community spread. That would be so nice. And that's the biggest thing is we've all been, you know, with clean, everything needs to be sanitized and we're taking care of that. And we need to remember that when this starts to dissipate, to continue to do that, to keep things like COVID-19 away, or just in general. I mean, the general flu or cold, just consideration of sanitizing things. It's, it only takes a couple of minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I don't think people realized until uh, the, the presence of this um, COVID-19, how often we tend to touch our faces. It was even a lesson for me. But yes, um, you know, the basic hygiene practices of sneezing in your elbow or in a tissue and discarding, washing your hands regularly, ensuring that frequently touched surfaces are disinfected, and keeping your, your distance from individuals is probably uh, uh, not a bad thing to keep in mind at all times, just to keep from getting sick. Absolutely. You know, you never know when you're going to catch a cold. It just doesn't happen in spring and fall or summer colds are the worst. <laughs> they are <laughs> yes, the absolute worst. Uh, so, yeah, just just little things like that. When you finally can find Lysol, I'm still looking for it. But when you can find things like that or you make your own solutions of bleach and water or whatever you have that is a proven disinfectant and sanitizer. I mean, it's just easy to keep it in a spray bottle. I come into the studio every morning and spray everything down. It takes maybe 10 minutes. And I've sanitized door the door handles. And I've noticed that 
as I was doing the door handles, I noticed the next day, I'm like, oh, when I opened the door, I pushed the door in a certain area. So now I'm like, let me clean the door area too, because I'm afraid. Things like yes. thermostats, uh, light switches, just things you really don't think about. And you're like, oh, but it only takes a few extra seconds just to keep things clean and keep things um sanitize so that you don't get sick. You know, when your family is sick, anyhow, you find yourself doing that more. You're Lysoling sheets, you're running them through the hot water, you know, instead of the cold water. So this Absolutely. is the type of thing you just need to keep at top of mind. Absolutely. Wow. Well, Shelby, why don't you tell us um, the deadline is tonight at midnight, but that is only for individuals, right? That's correct. Um, the um, application deadline will close at 1159. Um, GNB cares uh, for business. Um, that application process will be open um, as well for seven days, and that um, opens on uh, Thursday. Beautiful, beautiful. And if somebody needs assistance, where can they go for the application or for assistance? We encourage individuals before they apply to visit gnbcares.org to review the documentation and the criteria for qualifying. Mm -hmm. um, the application is live on that website, gnbcares.org. If individuals need uh, assistance in filling out the application, uh, don't have access to a computer, they can dial 211 to set up an appointment. And okay. you can also send an email um, to the gnbcares at cityofgainesville.org email address to submit questions or um, ask for help. That is beautiful. You, you're doing a wonderful job helping our community. And it's so appreciated. I'm sure so many people are just so grateful, probably in tears, just happy that they're able to pay bills again, thanks to GNV Cares. So thank you so much, Shelby. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. We do have an update from Marion County Fire Rescue, encouraging safety as we reopen our community. Marion County Fire Rescue encourages business owners to keep safety a top priority as our community enters each stage of reopening. Now, many businesses closed during the COVID-19 pandemic are now making preparations uh, to reopen, and some have already reopened on a limited basis. While developing plans and coordinating preparations to reopen to full operations, it is imperative to remember the importance of practicing fire and life safety. Marion County Fire Rescue's Prevention Division offers the following reminders for businesses as our community continues to reopen. Inspect all exits and remove items which may block or restrict an exit from being used. There must be clear and unobstructed path to all exits to the building. You may restrict access to one entrance. However, all exits must be available. Identify all fire protection items such as fire extinguishers, fire alarm pole stations, and sprinkler heads and ensure they're easily accessible and all inspections on these items are current. Verify the operation of all emergency lights and exit signs in the location. Be sure to test the equipment on primary power as well as while using backup power sources. Inspect the location for any potential electrical issues. Examples include outlets without proper covers, exposed or damaged wires, and improper use of extension cords. If any electrical concerns are found, please contact a licensed electrical contractor to rectify the issues. The Marion County Fire Rescue Prevention Division is committed to assisting local businesses in reopening in a safe manner. Business owners are encouraged to contact the Fire Prevention Office at 352 291-8050 or you can email ken.mccann m-c-c-a-n-n -N, at marioncountyfl.org Meanwhile, Ocala Fire Rescue paramedics have been staffing a COVID-19 testing site at the Hampton Center 1501 West Silver Springs Boulevard for the last several weeks to ensure everyone seeking examination has access to a COVID-19 test. The Hampton site will remain operational until the end of May. COVID-19 nasal swab testing is available to everyone, including those not showing symptoms. Testing will continue to take place on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hour of 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. There's no appointment necessary, and the testing will conclude on the 28th, which is on a Thursday. For more information, please contact OFR Captain Jesse Blair at 352 266 
four seven six nine. You can also continue to get your testing done at county health departments across North Central Florida. That COVID-19 testing is at several locations and we'll give you the following dates and times. If your county does not have a scheduled testing location, please defer all screening questions to your county's Department of Health. Alachua County will do it every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Alachua County Department of Health, 224 Southeast 24th Street in Gainesville. Health officials do ask residents to call 352-334-8810 to schedule an appointment. Again, that number is 352-334-8810. If you aren't showing symptoms, you're still welcome to receive testing. If your insurance covers COVID-19 testing, payments will be billed. Otherwise, it is free. For Gilchrist County, those screening questions will go to the Gilchrist County Department of Health. That phone number is 352-463-3120. Again, that is 352-463-3120. In Levy County, you can have your testing done tomorrow at Yankee Town School. It's on 40 in Yankee Town, right there at Schoolcraft Drive. All locations operate from 9 a.m. to noon. No appointment required. Levy County Department of Emergency Management advises you to avoid eating or drinking about an hour before the test. In Marion County, testing must be done by appointment only. You can call 352 644 2590 to schedule Marion County Health Department officials extended testing to people who do not present symptoms as well. Again, that number is 352-644-2590. You can go to the College of Central Florida, Marion County Department of Health, and again, the Hampton Center as well. Our friends at WCJB TV 20 realize many people have been out of a job for a month or longer due to the coronavirus pandemic, and they're also finding it hard to pay the mounting bills. That's why WCJB TV 20 and Catholic Charities have joined forces for a special virtual telethon to raise funds for people that need help in paying those monthly bills such as rent, electricity, and the internet. Now, the goal was originally $15,000, and they got it so quickly that they raised it to $50,000, which is incredible. So you can go to wcjb.com, and you'll see the link to click on if you'd like to donate and help support our neighbors in North Central Florida. Today is the final day for this event. Once again, it is a virtual telethon, which is really cool. And that goal is $50,000. Go ahead and click on the link at wcjb.com. And that way you can help as well. My guest today has been Shelby Taylor, Director of Communications, City of Gainesville. And I'd be remiss in not thanking others who helped make this interview possible. Rosanna Passaniti, Public Information Officer. She's new there. Also, Gracia Fernandez, Staff Specialist. So thank you ladies so much for helping me today with Homepage. Homepage is presented as a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5, 95.5 and 107.9. Your comments are always welcome and you can email me at homepage at ncfmgroup.com. You can also listen to Homepage by going to our websites at 93.7 K country.com and windfm.com. I'm Kathy Dugan. Please join us again next Sunday for homepage.